It's the WP Minute. This episode is brought to you by the WP Minute. Sponsor the WP Minute by visiting store.mattreport.com. And you can sponsor the WP Minute podcast. Comes out every Wednesday in both audio and written form of our newsletter. Go to store.mattreport.com to purchase a sponsorship. Or sponsor today's guest, our head writer here at the WP Minute, Eric Karkovac, who writes a monthly column on the Freelancer's View. If you want to support his work, the money that you spend goes directly into his pockets. Go to store.mattreport.com and click on the Freelancer's View. Links will be in the show notes, but you can sponsor his work written right here on the WP Minute. Get your brand linked up, summarized, and supporting independent WordPress news like this. Go to store.mattreport.com. Today, Eric and I sit down, we talk about WordPress journalism, how he got started, what the best way is for you to get started. And if you want to contribute content to us, we would love to work with you. You can work right alongside Eric in our official news organization here at the WP Minute. Reach out to us at the WPMinute.com. Okay, here we go. Talking about WordPress journalism, me and Eric Karkovac. Mostly when I'm not here at the WP Minute, I'm over at speckyboy.com and there I cover WordPress and general design and freelancing and pretty much anything that a web designer would need to know or want to know, or want to make jokes about, I've got it. Eric, how do you approach, let's say, the freelancer's view? That's that's what that's what you write about. That's like the, the higher uh, topic that you cover here at the WP Minute. How do you know so much about the freelancer? Are you a freelancer yourself? Have you freelanced in the past? How do you get that frame of reference to write the great content that you do? Well, I have been a freelancer since 1999, so I've kind of seen and done many things over that time, and having used WordPress pretty much exclusively over the last dozen years or so, I've run into a number of situations where I think I I have an idea of what freelancers are going through, the ups and downs, and there's certainly been uh, a lot of changes, especially the last few years, so... That's why I try to focus on how everything affects freelancers and what, based on really what I'm experiencing. What's the biggest thing that's changed for you for WordPress that has maybe impacted your freelance business, positive uh, or negative? Has it been the rise of page builders? This, this was a thing. This is something that I had said a, a while ago. Page builders was going to lessen the dollar amount that a freelancer might charge in the future because it's getting easier not only for the freelancer to build a website, but potentially their customer as well. Was I misled by my own theories <laughs> on that statement? Has that made an impact? Or have well, you I think it has made an impact. Now, I don't think it's impacted me personally as much. I kind of made a decision early on that I didn't like page builders and I wasn't going to use them. I was still building themes by, from scratch, basically. I'm using advanced custom fields for a number of years. And as Gutenberg has come along, I've actually adopted my use of ACF to that with their block setup. So I've, I've been able to kind of continue on with what I'm doing. So the page builder space, if I'm hired to deal with that, it's usually because somebody else has screwed up with a page builder and they want it rebuilt and want it to work and be I mean, easy to maintain. WP Minute contributor Daniel Schutzmith, we talked about this on the latest episode of The Rewind where he said he he wishes that uh, WordPress core had custom fields built into it. That would make it more, <clears throat> well, I guess developer friendly, but also you start leaning really into a out of the box, no code solution, air quotes, no code solution. What's your take on that? Do you think WordPress core should have an ACF type solution or God well, save ACF? The, actually, WordPress does have custom field capability out of the box but it doesn't have the visual interface that ACF gives it. What ACF ended up doing so well was actually giving folks an interface, allowing for repeater fields and fields that were like date pickers and all kinds of different things that tie in with JavaScript and different ways to present the data. It would be great if WordPress had something like that. And in particular, something like that to leverage for blocks because a lot of us aren't experts at React just yet. And being able to do that same kind of functionality with PHP, um, which ACF allows you to do, that's huge. That's that's honestly kept me in the game and I think a lot of other people as well. When did you start making the transition from writing code to writing words? And I know code is words too, 
don't don't send me the emails people but when did you start supplementing your freelance uh income um, that was about 10 years ago words? i decided to uh start writing a little bit on my own did some of my own blogging and i saw an ad on uh, specky boy's website that they were taking submissions from the community so i decided to contact the owner of the site paul andrew and uh, he took me up on it it wasn't a paid gig he just basically asked what i was going to write about i sent him an article and he accepted it. And so I, every once in a while, I would continue writing, sending him articles unsolicited and uh, he kept publishing them. So uh, eventually he offered me a, a paid gig doing it. And he actually also got me in and in, into a few other places like Envato. I wrote for their official blog for a little while. And so it just kind of started organically just by taking a chance really. And I, it was kind of a way for me to give back because at the time, I know I'm not the world's greatest writer of code, but I am pretty decent at explaining concepts and how to do different things, particularly when it comes to, to WordPress. So I thought that might be a nice way to uh, kind of connect with the community a little bit while supplementing income and just kind of meeting people and having a good time with it. One of the things you and I have talked about offline before is encouraging others to write for, well, arguably the WP Minute, right? How do we get more people to want to contribute to the WP Minute? That's not always necessarily trading dollars. Do you think that this is sort of one of those, like when I was your age, I walked to school, things I'm about to say, but do you think that still exists with some of the younger generation in the WordPress world? Do you think there's anyone out there that was that would trade, hey, I'm just going to write for you for some exposure and just to just to start seeing what opportunities are out there? Or is everything just pay me the money. And I can take both sides of that argument, but what's your thoughts on those who are coming up these days? I really think there is still like a place for people who want to to learn and maybe aren't expert writers that I certainly wasn't at that time. Not saying I'm one now, but I was kind of a novice back then. And I, I, I definitely think there are a lot of people that are interested in getting their their writing out there and getting their opinions and connecting with people. And you're not necessarily going to make much money at that right away. Honestly, monetizing it wasn't something I even thought about really early on. It's just as I got more into it, I started seeing that, hey, this could kind of be like a second career almost. I, I honestly feel like there are others out there who would be interested in that. What topics does like one start out with? Is tutorials and explaining code a thing where one starts in the WordPress space or should they focus on something else? Uh, freelancing, building a business, making money, what topics do you think someone would really be able to start with that's not so saturated? I think it's really about your own experience. That's what I've always tried to do is write about what I'm experiencing at the moment. It could be a project you're working on that had a specific challenge, or it could be something you notice in WordPress itself. We've had a number of posts on that, you know, so how, whether it's a tutorial on how to achieve a certain goal, or it's something that you wish were improved, maybe that you think, hey, wouldn't it be great if WordPress was able to do this or that? Plug in ideas, anything like that that interests you. I think if if you're writing about what's interesting to you, then that's going to show through to other people. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that is a popular topic at the moment. But then again, don't be afraid to write about that either because the internet is kind of infinite and there's room for everybody's opinion, I think. Yeah, for sure. You You've spent a lot of time commenting at WP Tavern has that? Well, I say that. I don't know if you have. <laughs> I just, I see your name come up a lot on, on articles when I'm reading them and I see you engaging over there. Has that been something of value to you to get recognized and to get people saying, hey, come write for us too? I, I think it's been kind of a nice experience for me. And actually in 2021, I was named one of the mo most prolific commenters on the site. They had, a, they had a little breakdown of that. I think I was second or third in, in most comments. So yeah. I do spend more time on that than I should, but it's it's a nice way to connect with people and you kind of get a sentiment for how others are feeling. So I, I, I found that to be a value. There are some other communities, certainly Twitter. I'm very much into that as well. I've connected with a lot of people. I like to put out big, broad questions about what people are going through with WordPress and see what their different takes are on. So, you know, that, that's really where I get a lot of story ideas too. It's a great way to, to kind of figure out what people want to want to hear about. What's your take on, uh, I, I, I think I'm stealing this phrase from some big news organization, but like the news that matters, like what types of topics do you think really 
can kind of go across across the entire spectrum of WordPress, both like people like you and I and people who are listening to this who are in one, let's face it, if you're listening to this podcast, you're in the 1% of WordPress people who care about like the inner workings of WordPress. This is not hitting the mom and pop pizza shop that built their own WordPress site and they're selling coupons with WooCommerce. They're hosted at Bluehost. They're not listening to this. I'd love for them to, but they don't. What is the content that you think can sort of cross almost all of the spectrums, both the, the one percenters and the people who should be informed on things in WordPress? I think one of the big issues that we're facing right now is the, the plugin ownership changes because that affects everybody. That affects the people who are building the sites. That affects the people who are running the sites. What happens when your plugin that you really depend on gets sold to some other company? Does it improve? Does it become kind of, does it languish in the, in the market and the support go down the drain? I think that's kind of important. I think the, the other area is probably WordPress core. We've seen so many massive changes with Gutenberg and it's kind of taken over where we used to have widgets and now full site editing. That is not only a problem or I should say a, a challenge for developers, it's also a challenge for people who own sites because over time they're going to have to convert and they're going to have to invest in this technology. So it's kind of a nice thing to know what you're getting into and why it's worth doing, or maybe it's worth holding off for a while. Yeah. I mean, the, the change of ownership for sure. I mean, like obviously like where WordPress is going, I bet if more end users who let's say when Gutenberg was released and if, and if they were upset versus a classic editing experience, if they were upset, but maybe if they were more informed leading up until this decision, until this like new release, when Gutenberg came out, maybe you're saving this percentage. And in, in terms of WordPress, we all know this, it's massive. So even if it's saved 1%, 2%, 5%, 10% of people, of like true end users who really don't care about software, they just want it to work and they want to be happy with it. That's a pretty large, that's Absolutely. a pretty big number, 10% of, of, of end users. But more, more importantly, like you said before, that change of ownership because yeah, one day you're using a plugin, maybe you don't even know it's there because your neighbor's son built you a website and for your florist shop. And then one day somebody bought that plugin and you log in and it says buy now for $97 a year. And there's this ad that's slapping you across the face every time you log into your WordPress site. And you're like, what the heck is this? Who is this? Where did this come from? You don't even know that code affecting your website was, air quotes, sold off to somebody else to now inject an ad and upsell you on this thing. Crazy world. It's, it's definitely something that impacts everyone. I mean, think about all the millions of sites and we were just talking about ACF and that was sold last year. Millions of sites run that every, every day. So Yoast was sold. We, we've seen a lot of very popular plugins change hands. And what if it's running a key component to your e-commerce shop, WooCommerce extension, that, that can be a, a pretty big deal. And from what we've seen on some of these buyouts, it's not necessarily a change for the better. People have done some user unfriendly things with, with these plugins once they've acquired them. That's not across the board, but there have been cases where people have put those ads in, people have taken away features that were being used and or changing the UI of the plugin so much that it's kind of unrecognizable to someone who logged in yesterday. There's a uh, section, and I should know this off the top of my head, and I'm going to talk slow to delay just a touch as I switch over to try to find a Mike Little sent me a message after listening to one of our episodes that we can uh, try to register or submit the WP Minute to Matt Mullenweg, in fact, to have the site listed on the dashboard of WordPress. I can't remember the name of the widget that loads when you first log into, into WordPress right on the dashboard. But there are other sites in there like WP Tavern, like Post Status, I believe, and Hero Press, all seemingly news sites, or at least one of them is definitely a news site. Is that the best way to get in front of end users, you think? Or is there a different way besides ad dollars <laughs> that we should be doing to get in front of the average well, I user? Think, 
that's been the the problem with word in the WordPress space. You're trying to to reach people. The official channels for news and just the developments within the project itself, they're very hard to come. If you want to go out there and find what's changing in the next version, they can really hide that stuff in a, in the Make WordPress site. That there's so many different channels on there to follow. You'd never be able to keep track of it all. I mean, even if you did, you'd have to sit there and read for, you know, hours to, to kind of go through all the discussions and the, the blog posts. So I, I think part of the issue, the official channels are very difficult to navigate. And then there's nobody really doing the day-to-day -day news that isn't directly involved in either automatic or it, it is independent, as you said. It's, it's, we kind of don't have that right now. And that's why I know that's kind of what the WP Minute is trying to, to tackle. Yeah, what a failed <laughs> job that's been doing. <laughs> you can say that, Eric, it's fine. Listen, I think about like democracy and transparency a lot. Like I think what you just said in WordPress is, hey, yeah, it's, it's open source. So like the top level benefits that we all say, admittedly, at least I do, and I know Mullenweg does and others, it's like, hey, it's open source. You can always see what's happening. Right. And it's this amazing thing that all these contributors around the world, they contribute to this thing. And at any point you could air quotes at any point, you could just jump in and give your two cents or help the cause or something like that. But then the average user goes and says, OK, so where do where do I see this happening? And then somebody turns to them and they say, well, just log into Git or get the Slack account. And the average person, what are you even talking about? Like GitHub, I can't even I can't even read it myself. Never mind Joe end user, right? Or Jane end user, who's I don't even know what you're talking. How do I even see this stuff? Now the Make teams have been doing a pretty good job with surfacing some of this stuff, at least on like the educational forefront. And Josepha, to give her some credit, has the uh, has her new pod new ish podcast. And then there's folks like us. And I think of things like local government, right? When you think of, hey, it's get involved with your local government and okay, how do I get involved? Oh, you have the need to be in person where you can watch these recorded meetings. And then you're, they're moving along with city council and there's all of this language that people don't know either. Like they don't understand the language of how government moves. Same thing with code. Like they don't get the language or what the terminology is. It's very easy for all, for all of us to say just, yeah, get involved open source, but there's a still a pretty big barrier of understanding the system, understanding the language that people use. That's, I think, something, and I, there's no question here, Eric, I'm standing up on a soapbox <laughs> and I'm talking to myself largely. It's like, how do we educate people on how the sausage is made, for lack of a better phrase, right? If we can do a better job educating people, these are the, this is the infrastructure helping build this stuff, get them to kind of understand like how software is made from a really high level, maybe we can educate more people to encourage them to be more involved with, with the WordPress news. I don't know, maybe you're just crazy. Well, I think guy. you hit on something there because I actually come from a, a newspaper background. That was my first gig out of high school, working at my local newspaper, doing their website. And we covered a lot of really boring stuff there, like the local city council meetings, maybe high school sports, those things that aren't necessarily newsworthy 10 miles east or west, but, you know, important to the people in that spot. And I honestly feel like WordPress could kind of benefit from some of that. Having, because it is open source, we don't necessarily have to simply rely on the official sources themselves. We can take it upon ourselves to kind of get that message out there. We can talk about what's going on, why it's happening, how it's happening kind of explaining it in uh, terms that aren't overly technical. I think that's kind of how we get people involved. Just for example, a few weeks ago, the Tavern published an article about WordPress possibly using WebP images by default. When you uploaded a JPEG image to your media library, it was automatically going to be converted over to WebP. And there started to be a little bit of an uproar about that. I put something out on Twitter about it and commented on the on the posts, as I always do at WP Tavern. And we started getting more people to talk about this, and they actually just decided that they're not going to include this in 6.0. They're going to hold off on it and take a look. So I think 
that's just one small example. I mean, it's not necessarily just to stop people from doing something that you don't like. It's just to get information on what is being discussed and maybe your opinion might be something influential that you don't even realize. I want more people to care <laughs> about WordPress news, I guess. It is not just about, I don't know, the, the cool business side of things. Hey, this was acquired. This was this company got bought for millions of dollars or look at this shiny new feature. It's really to to have these, you know, checks and balances and voices from others so that it's not just whatever, a handful of people making these decisions. And I'm not and it's not that like you said, it wasn't a bad thing. It was just let's Let's reset for a moment, and maybe there's a different way to do it. And and really, just the, the sheer scale of WordPress, it's not even, I've said this a million times, it's just a human problem at this point. There are so many people that it affects, with so few people maybe in control of it, but so many people that it affects that this becomes like a human problem. It's not just, did you space your PHP exactly. file correctly? <laughs> like, it doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah, just, just think, and if you take that WebP argument for for a moment one of the arguments against it was that well if it's going to create all these these extra files on the server and people with limited server resources they may see their storage amounts double because they're uploading large jpeg images that are getting cut down into three or four thumbnails plus the original and it, it it's something that does affect a whole lot of people think about all the people that are running wordpress on shared hosting or even those who have bandwidth restrictions on their hosting of where they're going to see extra fees because they've used too much bandwidth. All those things come together. And if they had just, and, and, and in no way do this to be like nefarious or unhelpful, I think they, they were, they're trying to do the right thing. But if this had snuck into 6.0, how would that have all played out for so many people? it would have been kind of an inconvenience, at least for a lot of people. And some may have found that they owe their hosts a decent bit of extra money at the end of the month because they went over some some limits. Let's, let's just play on, as we would do in the newsroom, let's just play on some headlines. If that had, had come true, like you could have written headlines like WordPress 6.0 causes a $6 billion increase in hosting fees. <laughs> WordPress 6.0 with a 37% bigger carbon footprint because we're processing <laughs> because we're processing on the just, plus side it could have made like a big difference in the stock prices for hard drive manufacturers cloud storage companies this is true you know this is true this <laughs> there's plenty of ways to spin the news let's talk about somebody's listening to us right now and they're like you know what yeah these types of stories Eric's Eric's introduction into the the writing game starting off at Specky Boy taking a leap of faith putting out some work, getting noticed, uh, getting valued, now writing for us here at the WP Minute. How did how does one get better? How did you get better after your first, I don't know, whatever dozen articles that you put out? Is there a step-by-step -step process <laughs> that you use to just improve your work or is it just practice, routine, getting into I think it? a lot of it is practice, but I also find it helpful to have Grammarly. I use that a lot. I, I, I just love having that. I, I still, I'm very old school in how I write. I write my articles in Word, and then I'll put them over into an HTML editor, and then they go to WordPress. So I'm reading them three or four times. I'm going over everything, and I'm also correcting the grammatical stuff that I know I'm not perfect with. So take some time. Be passionate about what you're writing. I think if you're, if you're writing subject matter that is you know utterly boring to you, you're probably not going to care about the quality as much. So I, I try to write about things that interest me. I try to be very intentional about rereading what I've written and also see how it, how people react to it. If you, you get a lot of people talking about it on social media, that seems to be an indicator that, yeah, this isn't so bad. Maybe I did a good job on this. Just practice, write, write for, for the fun of it. Even if you have a side project, uh, a blog about parenting, a blog about your favorite sports team or TV show or something like that. Just practice writing and, and make sure that it's something that you're enjoying. And over time, you'll, I think you do find that you can get better and, and improve on, on how you use your tech. Are you engaged with any other like writing communities or mastermind groups or mentorships or anything? No. Like that? Back in the day, I, I did a lot of um, just blogging for my own 
personal satisfaction. I had a music review site. I had a website to trying to save Surge Soda from extinction, which actually got some, <laughs> some media uh, attention back in the day. But uh, did you say I did not? I actually kind of gave up, and then and then. But this was pre Facebook. This was pre social media. We went viral in a different way. We were in the Associated Press, and we were on some TV shows and things like that. But it turned out that a a group of uh, guys started a Facebook community up for it after I stopped the website, and they ended up bringing it back. And I did get to share in that a little bit. They they sent me a little care package when it came back, and. Full of soda and there you go. different goodies from the 90s. So I was, I was really happy about that. Once someone gets better and they're like, you know what? This is a thing. Uh, this is a thing that I, I want to pursue. This is maybe a secondary income, if not oh, my leading income. I, I've seen some folks in the space who are just pure like content creators, right? And they're they're writing, mostly blogging. I don't even know if it's, is it, can you still say ghost writing? Probably not a thing. I, I think most people- I don't see it a whole lot of What are your thoughts? Yeah, I feel like everyone's, you know what, I'm valuable and I'm going to put myself out there. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, absolutely. Why? There's really no reason to do it these days, I don't think. And part of the reason, I think, is because WordPress makes it easy to have different authors writing on a blog. So, you know, you don't need to to, to cover for somebody else anymore. You can actually just be on, on there under your own name. And that's how you get the best exposure, I think. Doing ghost writing is not really going to happen. Yeah, I- boost your profile, boost your presence. Somebody says, oh, I see Eric wrote this piece. I Maybe I'll hire him. Any tips for pricing or time management? I'm sure just like web development uh, or web design, you say, don't charge by the hour, charge by the project. I'm sure maybe for you, it's charged by the article. Do people there are charge people by that charge by anymore? words. I don't particularly like that myself because I find that it's too limiting. Am I, if I'm supposed to write exactly a thousand words, am I kind of artificially inflating that article to include more than it needs to? Or am I limiting myself if I still feel that there's other important points to make? And in the days where we did newspapers and print, word counts are very important, but you have a lot more flexibility on the web. So if people have to... Word counts were important because of the actual literal layout of a piece of paper with print and you needed to make exactly, sure Exactly. Yeah. You, you, you had ad space sold and you've Once your ad space was sold, you only had a certain amount of room for actual content. So if you're, you can't go over time with that, they're not going to, in those days too, they weren't going to print extra pages because that was way out of the budget. So 600 words meant 600 words. And if they sold another ad, it might be 400 words. I'm going to put you on the spot for a second here. If somebody's listening to this and they're, yep, I want to get into this. The, I like the backstory of where Eric came from, some good advice on sort of upping my game and getting a little bit better. At, if somebody were to contribute content to, to us here at the WP Minute, as my crowned editor-in-chief, Eric Karkovac, <laughs> what kind of content would you want somebody to write and submit to the WP Minute for your review? If you said, hey, I would love to edit this kind of content, what would it be for you? What would you really enjoy reading of, of somebody else's I'd work? love to hear about the experiences people have had. What's worked for them in the WordPress space? Where do they struggle? What do they th- want to achieve in the future? What, what do they? How can WordPress help them get there? And even if it's a specific project where you accomplish something you didn't think you can accomplish, that's always a, 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 great, a great read to me. I love to hear about problem solving and people taking maybe a vague idea from a client and turning it into something that actually works. I think that would be a a wonderful thing to write. And also, if you have maybe inside experience with writing your own plugin, how do you, how do you handle support? How do you market it? Are you trying to monetize it? Or maybe you're not trying to monetize it. Maybe you really do want to just give back to the project without benefiting financially. I'd love to hear stories about how WordPress has actually impacted you and what um, you do every day. I'd love to hear some stories around the ethics of WordPress uh-huh. content, <laughs> but we'll save that for another discussion. Bonus question, Eric, Cal Ripken Jr., your oh, favorite absolutely, yeah. baseball player? I grew up going to Orioles games with my dad and actually got to meet him a few times, so that was really an honor. Oh, nice. He was one of one of my favorites growing up. I, I don't really recall why, I just always had all of his baseball cards when I was, was young, and he was always right up there. Obviously, I'm a Red Sox fan, but... He was always up there for me as well. Awesome. Eric Karkovac covers the freelancer's view here at the WP Minute, sharing some of his advice for writing. 
contributing to the WordPress news. Hit me up on Twitter um, at Karks88, K-A-R-K-S-8-8, and um, also at Karks.com. That's my my home site, so feel free to drop me a line. Great domain. Great domain. How did you get it? 1999. But I can tell you there's also a a TV station in Arkansas, K-A-R-K, and I have gotten many (laughs) a, a, a bit of traffic from people searching for K-A-R-K over the years, too. So I'd like to thank all my friends in Arkansas for boosting my numbers. That's your uh, <laughs> your call sign, at least at least in Arkansas. Everybody else, the WPMinute.com, if you want to get involved uh, and you want to write for us and contribute, let me know. Go to the WPMinute.com. There's a contact form there. Just reach out or tweet to Eric. Tweet to me at the WP Minute on Twitter. Uh, and if you want to support the show, you want to support content like this, buymeacoffee.com slash Matt Report. You can buy us a coffee. Little as five dollars, or join the membership seventy nine dollars a year. I think I said seventy nine dollars a month at the top of the show. It's not a month; it's a year. I'd love seventy nine dollars a month, but it's just a year, and you can become a producer, a contributor. Hop in our private Discord, chat with Eric, chat with myself, chat with all of the other newsies who make the WordPress news happen every Wednesday. Buy me a coffee dot com slash Matt Report the WP Minute dot com. See you in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>